Well, my name is James Anderson. I'm the chairman and CEO of Guanajuato Silver. Um, but we have a special prize, and that special prize for two people. This is a freshly minted Guanajuato Silver one ounce coin. And our director of communications, Gerente de Comunicaciones, JJ Genix, who's right at the back. JJ, stand up, make a little wave. Yes. So here's the deal. I'm going to give you the absolute best presentation I can for the next 10 minutes. And whoever applauds the most, whoever is the most enthusiastic about my presentation. Oh, no, 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 that, that has to happen after. But you got the right idea. There will be two winners. And JJ alone will pick who those winners are. So I want it loud. I want it brave. I want it to try a little bit less dancing on the tables. There is uh, safety concerns as well. So um, I, I'd like to thank I'd like to thank Gwen. Uh, Gwen has been a, uh, a supporter and a, and a friend of Guanajuato Silver for two years or so. And I would like to thank Peter Krauth, who um, you know obviously couldn't make it because he's ill. Uh, Peter is also a great friend of Guanajuato Silver. Peter traveled to Guanajuato in August, went underground at one of our operations, has as good a feel for the people, the assets, as anybody. He continues to recommend the purchase of Guanajuato shares, um, and who can argue with him? Um, uh, I will, of course, be making an enormous number of, of uh, forward-looking statements. Pay no attention to those. Um, <laughs> That, that's a good start. That's good. But you know, do hold your applause right until the end, and then you can make a big splash with it. Now, uh, I, we've only got 10 minutes, and I, I see that I've used two minutes already. Um, let me talk about silver just for a moment. Everybody in the room understands the, the currency destruction angle of silver and, and gold and precious metals. The governments of the world and the central banks of the world are doing their best to devalue fiat currencies, and therefore uh, historical monetary metals like silver and gold have a good strength behind them. However, silver is a little bit special. Uh, as someone mentioned earlier, only about 30% of silver that's produced in the world actually comes from silver mines. 70% comes from other mines. Silver is always like gold on steroids. Why is that today especially important? Because of the industrial uses of silver. Um, as this slide points out, Everything. Everybody here has got a cell phone, and I mean everybody here, here has a cell phone. Um, most of my Mexican partners have two cell phones. So, you know, w whenever there's an electronic device that's used in the 21st century, some silver is used and is consumed. The other very important element of the silver market are photovoltaics for solar panels. Currently, of the billion or so ounces of silver that are produced around the world, uh, about 12.5% are used for solar panels. That number, by Peter Kroth's research and by Chen Lin's research, if you are a fan of Chen as well, that number will go to about 25%. All of the silver in the world, 25% will be used to make photovoltaic solar panel um, farms um, not nearly as cute as this one, which is obviously in the shape of a, a panda bear. Um, the, everyone should have one of these in their backyard, I think. But nonetheless, you can see the, the, sub, the inelastic demand will meet a real lack of supply in the silver business, and that happens right now. We are Mexico's fastest growing silver company. I don't say that lightly. How do we do that? Over the last 24 months, from a standstill, we purchased the El Cubo mine and milling operation from Endeavor Silver. That we put back into production within four months. In August, we bought three mines, two production facilities from Great Panther, Silver, or Great Panther Mining. Um, we were able to put those assets back online, some within four days, some within two months. In an industry that counts itself lucky, if it moves things forwards in years and decades, we have set a new bar, and I think Gwen would um, support this statement, we've set a new bar for junior mining to be able to move things forward expeditiously. That is a, that is a, a mantra within our company, and it will not change. I, I should just make point out one last thing, too. We will leave this year with a, 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 at a run rate of about 3.6 million silver equivalent ounces of production per year. Next year, we will likely do about 5 million. 
and leave next year at a production run rate of close to 6 million silver equivalent ounces. And I can back that up by saying we're getting there already. You can see the first number of months this year that is ramped up production from El Cubo that we put back in production last year. And then the big jump in production in August, the same month that we completed the transaction with Great Panther, we had uh, additional production from the San Ignacio mine, which I will show you, from Topia, which is in Durango, which I will show you. And now, um, well, in uh, last month, we started production from uh, Valenciana, which I will show you. And before the end of the year, we will have that production facility up and running as well. While we're doing that, we are driving costs lower. Uh, these are narrow vein systems uh, in Mexico. Typically, they have a high cost associated with them. Our 100% Mexican team in Mexico is very, very good at mining narrow vein systems. I always like to say that on the weekends, Canadians like to go out and play hockey for fun. My Mexican friends like to go underground and go mining. <laughs> Guanajuato is the name of a city and a state in central Mexico. Uh, it is obviously a beautiful place. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A lot of the junior mining companies will tell you about, well, we have great infrastructure. Well, our head office is about four blocks from the, uh, from the picture that you see here. Our mines in Guanajuato are all within about a 20 or 25 minute drive of what you're seeing. There's a, an international airport with a, within about a 45 minute drive from here. In terms of infrastructure, it does not get any better. This is a mining community, not for 100 years, not for 200 years, for 450 years. Since, since 60 years after Columbus accidentally bumped into the, an island off North America on his way to China, the Spanish had been mining in Guanajuato. And these are some of the mines. So you can see El Cubo, that's off to the east. That was our first mine that we, that we bought from Endeavor last year and then Valenciana and San Ignacio. I'm not gonna talk about Pinguico, that was our original asset. It's turned into more of an exploration asset for us. We're gonna drive forward and talk about Kubo. There it is, we paid $15 million for this asset. Again, we like to get bargains. The last time that this asset changed hands was in 2012. Endeavor Silver paid $200 million for El Kubo. We buy it for 15, and then we end up spending about 5 million bucks on the plant to bring it back into production. This happened just last year. You can see the plant, it is clean, dry, organized. That's how we like to run things in our operations. There's um, the four and a half kilometer long structure that people have been mining at El Cubo for about 120 years. There's lots and lots and lots there. I'm not gonna bore everybody with all of the exploration that we're doing. We have a drill that, that drills pretty much constantly at El Cubo. Here's San Ignacio, this is the mine also in Guanajuato, out to the west, uh, again within four days of the transaction with Great Panther closing in August, we had this in operation. And then there's Valenciana. So we always knew at $14.3 million, we were getting a great deal from Great Panther. We purchased three mines, two production facilities for that amount of money. You know, sometimes in the world of mining, $14 million looks like a drill program. So we're very proud of that. And as we get more and more into the, the details of the, the assets, we realize that e even in our wildest dreams, we've got a, a, an even better and better deal. Valenciana though is special. Valenciana has been in production for 450 years. The mines of Valenciana, that's about a four kilometer strike length that you're looking at, over the last 400 years, two billion ounces of silver have been taken out of these mines. In the 1700s, the mines of Valenciana were producing about 40% of the entire world's silver. So that's pretty impressive. So why is it turned into kind of a, you know, mon pa, you know, smallish operation? From the 1930s onwards, it was mined by a local kind of socialistic cooperative that they called the Cooperativa. And they mined it in a very Mexican style. They went underground every day, took out some silver and gold, got enough to, bu uh, to buy some beer and tacos, and went away. In 2005, the Cooperativa sold that asset to Great Panther. 
that, is all, that had always been a company that was a little undercapitalized, never really got a chance to, to look at this asset in a 21st century way. And in fact, sadly, um, within 90 days of us completing this transaction with Great Panther, they, they've declared bankruptcy. So uh, I only just mention that as a, as a mark of how, how they managed this asset over a period of time. We will do that a little bit differently. We're already mining here, and the, what we see underground here is a world-class silver asset. It was 200 years ago, and it can be again. This is the plant that is associated with the Valenciana assets. Uh, this will be back in operation prior to the end of the year. And that's all of the stuff that's around Guanajuato. We also got one other mine in Durango as part of this transaction. There's Topia. It's small, but very high grade. The resource rhymes with one kilo of silver per ton. Last week, we produced about 26,000 ounces of silver from this mine, a silver equivalent. And there you can see again, you know, for, for a song, that's the, the plant, the offices that, that come with the transaction that we finished in August. There's our resources. Our share price, you know, I mean, it's been a tough market for the last two years. We've built this company, Mexico's fastest growing silver mining company, at a time of declining, continually declining metal prices. That's been hard. Our shares, on the other hand, have materially outperformed the pack. And I would suggest that going forward, that that will continue as well. There's a list of uh, people who own our shares. That's always helpful. Everybody always, the CEOs of these companies always like to stand up in front of the audience and brag about the fantastic team uh, that, that we have. Um, I'm only going to talk about one person, and that's Ramon Davila. Ramon is our president. Um, Ramon has, in my estimation, the best CV in Mexican mining. He was the chief operating officer of First Majestic from when that company had four employees to when it had 4,000 employees. From zero production to 12 million silver equivalent ounces production per year. When Ramon left that company in 2016, the reason that he did that was to take on a political role. He became the economy minister for the state of Durango where he lives. Uh, I asked Ramon mm, in February to take a more, he was already on our board of directors. I, I said, Ramon, you know, we're going to be growing this company. We need somebody who can really take uh, the bull by the horns, really make a company out of this. And such a Ramon thing, I, I thought he would say, well, James, give me a couple weeks to think about it. He said, James, I'll call you tomorrow. And he made that decision. He is full time. Um, I, have, I have never worked with a better manager in any business at any time in my, in my business career. So he's awesome and a pleasure to do business with. That's the whole story. And so I, I offer JJ Jenix, who's going to judge who is the best, who is the, yes, yes.